Hello everyone, welcome to IRL Alpha. My name is Beganbot and I'm your host. We're here to talk about all things NFT and Web3. However, this is not a panel show where we lecture you on how we're gonna make it and how, you know, GM and everything's good. It's a debate show. We've gathered this group here because we don't agree on a lot of things. So that's the idea. Now, if we start agreeing too much, it's your job to start disagreeing with us as well. So if you have an opinion, you have a hot take, you care about anything, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Actually, here, let's get these two audience mics out here. I'm just handing them to y'all. I know y'all. Pass them out. So if you're in the audience, you wanna talk, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. If you want, you can just step up to a microphone there as well and say whatever you'd like. Now, we're gonna try and keep the topics on one topic, not whatever you like, like, We'll try and keep on topic, but it's not just for everyone here in the audience. If you guys can't see, we do have some screens around showing Twitch chat. Hi, Twitch chat. So you gotta talk in the mic so they can hear you as well. If you're in the audience and you don't feel comfortable being on a microphone, you can pull out your cell phone, hop on twitch.tv slash beaconbot. You can chat as well. We've got a couple people here trolling me in person right now. Uh, also, if you're someone in the, uh, at home and you wanna talk, please type your message and we'll try and read it out. So anyone on the panel, you see a message you agree with, you disagree with, et cetera, please feel free to say, heroin, what are you talking about? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, okay? So please, please, please keep bringing it up. Now, we do have some topics we listed up here that have things have happened for the week. However, like I said, the show, it's interactive. We could end up staying on any of these for a short time, a long time. We might deviate and end up fighting about AI art, even though let's like not do that since it happens like every other week. Uh, but yeah, please keep on topic if you want, but if you got a nice transition, let's hear it. Uh, so, like I said, I'm Beganbot, I'm your host, I'm a programmer, a DJ, streamer, loudmouth, all that stuff. Uh, my partner's entire operation happens to be Trick over here. If you guys didn't know, Trick actually does all the sound for the space, does all the design for the space. If there's a plant here, Trick brings the plants in. I try and tell him no more plants, he keeps buying more plants, I want to buy more microphones. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Trick, like anything that's like, you know, any vibes that are right, any lighting that's good, Trick handles that. And also, he's probably the fastest finger drummer, at least I can say in Venice. So, Trick, you know, show him what you got. So good. Pretty good. You know, that wasn't really showing off the fastest, okay? I was waiting for like some, you know, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, but nice. Uh, so let's introduce our panel. Like I said, it's not a dry panel show, but we still got to know who we're talking with here. So starting to my right, we have. I am, whoa, uh, show me your NFT, uh, local degen, and I'm interested, Bisco, what Cheetos? Are we talking Flaming Hot Cheetos? Because he said he's in his underwear eating Cheetos right now. What up, y'all? I'm Jason, and I do product stuff in Web3 land. Also, if you guys haven't figured out yet, uh, Jason is Trick's other half, okay? I don't know if you say other half, but they're I'm brothers. Also a trick. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Ben Lakoff, uh, founder, investor, advisor in the space. What's up, everybody? Nadir, rapper, software developer, love taking risks. What's going on? Beautiful. Yo, Wags, founder, Virtue Animation, and B Basement Gang. Gang, gang. Gang. Anybody that shows up today, we're giving an allow list spot for Trick. For, uh, we'll have a link at the end of the show. Beautiful. Okay, let's, 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 get, let's get started, okay? So we got quite a few topics. Oh, oh whoa, okay, wait. Oh, okay, Trick, what's going we on? We got no, our what? first caller. Uh, okay, let's... <laughs> We got a call. Let's take it. What, what's going on? Hey, yo, Budgie Bad here. How we doing, motherfuckers? Long time listener, first time caller. Wait, this so one I'm of your friends, Jay Wags? I do what I want, okay? Hey, hey guys. I'm so excited and grateful to be here. I love IRL Alpha. This is my favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little high. Uh, begin, Patrick, Heroin, uh, Josh. Uh, uh, Josh, in the gang, all such smart and great people. Eh, shut up, Yanni, you big old softy. Hey, if you guys really want this show to blow up, you'd have me on as a guest, all right? I mean, look, it's okay right now. You got Begin, who's a big nerd, but, uh, sometimes he's funny. Uh, Patrick is the pessimist who always stretching all these BS projects, I can't say that I blame him. And Heroin, well, um, I don't know what the hell value he brings. But he does wear glasses indoors, so maybe he's blind or something? Oh, who the hell knows? Aw, oh, come on, Pat. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> uh, well, hey, guys. 
we just wanted to call and, and say to check us out in the basement, gang. Uh, we're getting ready to go on this uh, a, a journey yeah, to save the metaverse, and uh, we may need your help. You may need the help, Tommy Chong. Not me. Oh, uh, well, Pat, you know I love you, but you have no arms or legs, and you know you're kind of fat. Hey, budgie, not fat. Yeah, look, if you motherfuckers want to come and join us on a journey, mints in a couple of weeks. Either hop in, or you can keep minting these bullshit rug projects. It's up to you. All right, pat out. Okay, what, what, these are your friends, Jay Wax. What are they? Okay, they're, <laughs> they're so stoned, they don't even realize that Patrick and Heroin aren't even on the panel this week. So, I mean, like... They are, they're, they're stoned in the basement. That's what they do. They're, they're All right, bombs. so... So if you, if you are in the audience, you want a whitelist for Basement Gang, scan the QR code there. If you're in the Twitch chat, if you do bang chat, or sorry, people call it exclamation point, I think, uh, it'll pull up info as well. Yeah, we call, if you don't know exclamation points, we call them bangs. bangs. <laughs> Bang. If you don't know. It's bang. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so let's get started. We've got a bunch of topics to talk this week. I mean, Tyler. I mean, let's just start with Tyler, because Tyler. our boy Tyler and uh, Matt, they made a cool, like, $17 million yesterday from selling art that they didn't make, that we tirelessly worked over. So, I mean, pretty crazy. Uh, first of all, I don't know uh, if anyone did. Congratulations. Did anyone here actually get a QQL Mint Pass for 14 ETH? I, yeah, I did not either. Well, if you would have, you would have made right now, uh, let's see, six seven? ETH? Yeah, like seven, seven ETH? Seven yeah, ETH. so it worked. Trick, can you go uh, to the, um, well, here, actually, wait Bigger a minute. question is, why didn't you make the play? Yeah, that's the first thing I asked you when I saw you today. Why didn't you make did the play? You, did, did, you, did you get one? So, I, yeah, yeah I, so I debated, I did debate getting one, and I got to be honest, which I might sound a little bit crazy, which is, I think QQL, aesthetically, in my personal opinion, what I've seen so far, I like it better than Fidenza. So, I mean, I like Fidenza. Is uh, that an objective opinion? What does objective mean? What do you mean? Like, yeah, it's my personal opinion. I looked at it and I smoked some weed. I stared at them and I said, ooh, I like these slightly more. You know, so I, I do like them more. And I also think if you compare this to Fidenza, right, it is a more interesting evolution, right? One is just generative art. This is a mixture of community and generative art together. So, I mean, the, the real reason why is because I just didn't want to spend 14 ETH on a risk right now. So maybe I'm stupid. I should have. I would have bought it and just held it. Really? So, uh, yeah. For, so for people in our audience who aren't familiar, can someone break down like the process and like how you were able to mint QQL, like the whole thing? Yeah, so the whole thing with the QQL, right, is they made an algorithm. Everyone then got to spend as much time as they want making as many variations as they want. And then they submit which one they thought would like be the best. And then a group curated and picked their favorites, a bunch of artists. And then those ones end up becoming the QQL collection. So now you're buying a mint pass to be able to get one of those. But it is made by someone, you know, in the world, in the audience. So, it, you know, it's a, people have done this in the past. This isn't the first time someone said, here's an algorithm, make the art. But this is definitely the biggest, most popular scale ever. How many? Uh, 900, what was uh, it? Right same, under a Same thousand. amount as the Fidenzas, right? whatever, right 990, under, I think. Right under a thousand. Yeah, right yeah under a thousand, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, pretty interesting. I mean, in, I mean, they made a lot of money, and then they said, hey, X2Y2, you can't sell this on our platform because we don't get a, what is it, a, a 5% uh, royalty? Yeah, and so it was, that was really interesting was uh, X2Y2 was kind of uh, congratulating Tyler, but at the same time backhanding uh, him is trying to say that it's not decentralized and you might not really own your NFT because uh, you can't put it on any platform you want. And for the first time in a long time, I actually agreed with Farouk, who was trolling them in the comments. <laughs> Um, it was amazing, and I was just like, all right, here we go, Farouk, like, good takes, finally. But in general, um, it's, it's an interesting debate because at the same time, uh, X2Y2 is saying you can choose whether you want to pay them, but you can't choose whether you want to pay us, right? You can't do the opposite. You can't say, ah, eh, you know what, we're just going to cut your royalties. They get theirs always. You just decide on the other way around, which I think is... Um, a, a fair reason to be kind of critical of, of their post. It was, I mean, I get what people are saying where it's like, hey, you guys made $17 million. Maybe it's, you don't want to be say like right away, like, hey, I want to make sure I get my 5% every time. I was like, dude, aren't you good? I get that. But at the same time, if you start breaking down royalties for one project, right, it breaks down everywhere. So there might be another, right, you know, Art Blocks Mint that isn't the most hype thing ever. And they do need that 5% every single week to sustain themselves. So, I mean, I, it makes sense morally to me. But no matter what, when someone makes millions of dollars in a day and you're like, yeah, make sure you give me, give me that can I get my change back? You're always like, dude, what the hell's wrong with you? So, but at the same time, they were they were innovating and they've been working on this for 
for a long time, like nearly a year, right? And they could have just done Fidenza's V2 and it would have been a way easier path. So I do like that they are innovating and trying something a little bit different and experimenting, especially like going out on the risk spectrum versus tried and true, but Fidenza's number two, let's go. Like, so you gotta, you gotta give it to them at I, least for that. I think that um, this topic of decentralization and like, are we gonna stay true to that decentralization? I think it's just gonna become a matter of in whichever direction the people who are popular or the people who innovate the best, kind of whatever they do in sticks, that's what our definition of decentralization would be. Cause like maybe if like another artist would have did that, everyone would have been like, nah, we're not doing the X2, Y2 thing. You know what I'm saying? But because it was so good, like you were saying, it was so innovative. Everyone's just like, eh. All right. Well, it's all you want the best art. You want someone who is a big popular artist putting their foot down for a more like morals that would work for everyone. So I'm okay with that too. You're the big one. If someone's like a little person, I don't sell any art. And I'm like, make sure I get my percentage. It's not moving the needle. This is like, you know, it, it has an impact on the world. It was interesting too, because I was in an art block space earlier today and there was a couple of generative artists that were kind of bagging on QQL and basically saying how like, name them. I, 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 I don't remember by the top. Oh, of the I don't remember all of a sudden. Yeah, okay. Right. But um, but they were they were upset because they said it was taking away the art of the way they create. Right. Um, and it was sort of uh, copy pasting, making it easier. And I didn't go on stage, but in silence on my phone, I was just like, well, that's exactly how programmers feel when websites started getting, you know, click and drop. Right, you know, like it, well, coding. I mean, coding is art, no matter what. Well, I mean, but, I can tell you, but being a, able to code right. easy sites all of a sudden turned into a harder job because I'm just gonna use this program, and I feel like that's what people think about QQL at the moment. Well, I can tell you as a programmer, like, and Vegan can attest this. Literally, everything is, hmm, who has done this before? Can I just go to GitHub, get the code, and make it my own? Like, that's that's never not been. That's the whole engineering is googling. That's what I'm saying. And reading that, documentation. That's, that's literally the entire vibe of like software development. Like, yeah, all right, let me just spend. And of eight. art, and of music, and of whatever, whatever, whatever. Everything. Everything. There's everything. There's seven billion people in the world. Like, it's probably been done at least once. You know and if you saying? can't learn from it, then you're. Uh... Well, and it's the same. It's like the classic thing with coding. Every single month, someone's like, "Oh, hey, soon your job's gonna be obsolete. It's gonna be drag and drop. My job's never obsolete. It is like <laughs> literally." And I've been being told this for 10 years. Literally every year, like, you just wait next year, and then it's the next thing. And it's like, wait till AI comes, it's obsolete. Do you know how many AI engineers every company's hiring? It's like, and then same, it's like, you know, the classic photography's gonna ruin painting. Like, nope, now we have painting and photography, so. I will say one thing I was interesting about the collection, right, since it was a collab between Matt and Tyler, is that, right, Matt had kind of the conceptual idea of I want people to, you know, actually go through the outputs and choose which art they want, and he reached out for Tyler for the aesthetics. So it is like a collaboration where someone's like, I have the idea, I think this idea is worthwhile, I want it to look good, and so I'll find another artist. So I, I, I think it leads like more credence to the collection versus just being like, this isn't just saying, here's an idea, make a piece of art. It was, here's an idea, let's very much focus, hello, what's going on? Let's very much focus on like making it aesthetically, like, like the variety is crazy. I mean, this compared to that, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's pretty impressive. Also, we've got a new panelist here, we've got this dog. Beautiful, glad to have, yeah, yeah. So, so this actually does uh, kind of tie into another thing that did happen this week, which is Artblocks Curated is ending. I don't know if you guys seen this, right? So this is like a, I, I mean, it's kind of interesting Why? thing. I, I don't know, I guess they're never gonna curate ever again. No, well like, so Artblocks has three collections always, Curated, Playground, Factory. Curated is the, the creme de la creme, the peak, right? That's your Fidenzas and your Swiggles. And then uh, factory is just like new people. It's not quite as hard to get into. Playground is for someone who did a curated, who then wants to be do another project, right? So if there's no curated anymore, does that mean that only the people who were in curated before will be able to do playground now? Does it mean we're going all factory? I think they're gonna make something completely new. I guess they'll they'll have they'll be a fresh start or something. But the curated when I was. When I was talking about that with you, I was like excited because I was like, dude, the entire floor of curated, like proper ones. You were showing me a ton of like, no one cares, no one cares, no one cares. I was like, I'd have no idea, right? But uh, the ones that are, that are sought after, if you owned one of those, Artblocks basically just told you, hold on to that shit. It's, it's, it's more scarce than it was yesterday, right? Um, so that's, I think, the, the one thing. If we are talking about Artblocks, being more of the um, upper class, higher threshold of what we look at as fine art in the space. They've got to do things to always um, 
decrease their, their volume of what they're outputting. And what they just did was completely capsulize one collection. And if they start a new one, this will fly while this one's starting to flourish and the rest stay where they're at. So I think it's a, it's a gaming model that they just understand because their holders are the same proof path holders where they have enough ETH to give you whatever you want as long as you give them what they, they need, you know? Yeah, it's like putting a hard cap on a token supply or something. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, for me, as someone who owns some curated, I was like, they're closing, and I was like, thank you, right? It feels good as a holder, right? And I'm not buying that much art blocks right now because, I don't know, I see heroin trolling in the chat. Art blocks is just target for generative art. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because I used to follow <laughs> every single art blocks release, and now it's like a full-time job. Like, I get the email, and I'm just like, oh, my God, there's so much. I mean, I used to literally... Too much dilution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it kill, kills the brand, and you want that scarcity. Yeah, so shutting it down is good. And then also I see, well, we've got real hot takes here, which is the art blocks is bad for the generative art space because closed gardens are bad for software. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm. Uh, art, wait, wait. Heroin says art blocks, fine art, lol. What about pudgy? Okay, you guys are just. Okay. You guys are just. <laughs> but no, that that, that is that is interesting though, right? Because that is the thing I dislike about art blocks is the fact that I can't read all of the code from all of the artists. is a pretty big concern for myself. But I come from the open source world. Let me read your goddamn code. Like that's all there is to it. Like oh, if, if it's so amazing, like. What are you hiding? Is what I want to know. That's all. Like, but I don't the, trust the, code. the curated drops are leaving forever, gone forever. They're gone. They're Have bending. they talked about what they're doing afterwards? Nope. I mean, bring back token curated registries. Let's go. Wait, 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 wait break that down. <laughs> TCRs are going to make a comeback. Wait, it's wait, a, wait, this wait, is perfect. Break for down it, what right? a TCR is. Wait, explain. Oh, explain. I love that you just yeah, said that. Right? Wait, can you explain what TCRs, a TCR is? TCRs, man. I'm just going to meme them into existence. They're going to happen. Like, you think of a decentralized Yelp. So the idea of like people curating good choices, and if other people agree with that, that rises to the top, like all with this token economy. Okay. So you could do something that like the art block curated NFT holders are actually voting on whatever the next one. So they're decentralizing the curation process to the art block curated NFT holders. That's where I think they should be going with this if they're not already. So it's like you, you're, you're no longer the kingmaker. I'm the curator. This is the thing that's going to fly. And you put that in the hands of the, the people that are actually so owning the would NFTs. Would you describe it as almost like a DAO for a qualitative choice? Yeah, right. well, it's like it's a game. Yeah, it's a, it's a token game where you put skin in the game. You stake tokens to make a claim that Ponzi. Yeah. this thing belongs on this curated list, and other people can vote against that. You're like staking your rec yep, reputation. You reputation. Can That's game. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, uh, yeah, TCRs are freaking cool, and uh, full disclosure, they've failed multiple times, and <laughs> they will continue to fail. So like, like yeah. MetaX <laughs> ad chain. Yeah. Yeah. This what, is a 2016 push, I think. That like yeah. 2017 what TCRs you, were the what rage. What do you think would get them to be successful now in 2022? Redesign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe. they're easily gamified. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I do see that. Like, I love the there's idea. There's a merit of, just, of value there. And, and I don't think it would work with art because TCRs don't work with sub subjectivity. So it has to be objectively verifiable. Like, for example, like if you're curating a list of top universities, um, you can objectively qualify Harvard and Yale. It's publicly available, whereas art is subjective. So it becomes difficult to curate something that's subjective by or, token vote. Or using something objective like floor price, which is easily gameable, and then it like leads you right back down this like uh, rabbit hole. Yeah. I, so I maybe no TCRs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine this. Imagine being like, okay, I'm an artist. I release an art blocks collection, and then I'm waiting a week, and then it's I get the email finally. It goes, you're curated. They loved you, and I'm like, yes, I did it curated. Or I find out, sorry, playground. You're like, dang it, that was my. I mean, that does. That feels better to me, almost, right? Like, who are these people curating? Who are they? Let me sh let me see their faces and what they actually what their yeah. criteria is. Yeah, so. honestly. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, actually, here let's let's uh moving off the art thing. Actually, one of the things that we've been seeing a bit. Actually, here let me see if this even even works here. I want to talk real shit here. This is just absolutely ridiculous. So, who's seen this? Because who cares about art? Okay, this is the new meta. It's called shit post to earn. So I think this is actually the, no, this is the new revolution, dear. okay? <laughs> if we look at the space right now, who is growing the fastest? Shit posters. It's always been like that. It's always been you like that. You are right, and why aren't they earning? <laughs> you're, 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 <laughs> so, so, it's my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Basta. So, so the idea of this is that this is like, it's pretty much like a Twitter bot. So when someone shit posts on Twitter and someone likes it, you tag this account, Drama Reward, and you just say, hey, that was a, that was a funny shit post. Or you just, just tag them. And then what happens is they like it. They send their like drama tokens. They give like uh, 
90% to the person who wrote the shit post and 10% to the person who tagged it. And uh, these tokens are used for who knows what. It's actually for like an NFT project, like unveiling stuff. I don't really care about the NFT project. I just like the idea that a post is hot and you're just like. Well, if you think about it, shit posting has been like the backbone of this space for a year and a half. Especially during the bear. Yeah. Like, I mean, easily a, a year and a half, right? Like I think, I don't know, like I probably like in your opinion, I think, I think the best shit poster is the kid function. Um, XO function, he's a good one. Like mm -hmm. Tyler, Thread yep. guy, like they're all pretty good. And I know. I mean, have you seen how? If you look at their Twitter graph of how they've grown, it's absolutely wild. It's insane. Any company that's a marketing company would be like, they would kill for this. And they go, what do they tweet about? And they'd be like, oh my god, what is going on? So like a lot of them, like, that, like Radio Shack. A lot of them have gotten like. <laughs> I was just talking to you about this. Like a lot of them have gotten hired by people from outside of the space who are trying to get into the space or people who are into this space that are trying to like really grow rapidly or seem like they know what they're talking about. So they'll just hire like these shit posters to just take over their accounts for them. And they're paying them like six figures just to seem like they're in this in in I mean, this in crowd. Magic Eden employs a shit poster full time. That's that's that's, that's the Magic Eden, you know, the, the Magic Eden intern on Twitter. No, yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's a full time shit poster. You know, so like that's that's a pretty good career. I, I feel like you know, I that's was, a pretty fun. I was very surprised when I got in the Magic Eden space and they started the space with, "What the fuck's up, everybody? All my fucking homies are here," and I'm like, "What am I? What? What's happening? Yeah, yeah the fucking boys." And I'm like, "All right, all right, Magic Eden. This is how they roll. Weird, yeah. weird. Well, yeah. Does it not work? I mean, did it not?" Now you I mean, all their Solana, it, it, it created Solana what it is. They're going with yeah. what Solana is, okay? I don't say it's good or bad, I'm just saying it's Solana. They, they, they read the room. They, yeah. they, you know, they, essentially <laughs> that's what they did, yeah, right? Yeah. Essentially that's what, and good what, for them. What's crazy, I was in an ETH room, and there was a, a woman, I won't name her last night, and she was saying, I hate Solana NFTs, but Solana boys are hot. Uh, and I was like, uh, whoa! I was like, all right. And I was like, how can you tell the difference on the blockchain? She's like, hey, go into a Solana space. You'll, you'll, you'll see. And I was like, all right, I'm getting it. So hey. there's something there. Okay. There's something to this. Okay. Solana, Solana is Ethereum's hotter younger sister. Uh, I, like it. I like nah, it. Nah, nah. I can't retweet that. Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> You should definitely tweet that. Okay, that, that, that's, yes. that's, that's good. Get it, get it a shit post. We'll yeah. give you some drama. Yeah, yeah. I mean, JPEGs, are, are you running a shit posting project? Is that not part of what basement? I mean, right? Yeah, it's, the, I mean, the whole thing's a meme, right? Like, our four main characters are the rug pools. If you follow along, like, the jokes, the writing, it's all a big meme. And I think, like, what do we need right now in the bear market? We need humor. We need comedy, right? Like, we need vibes. And one of our characters, Pudgy Pat, like, his storyline, if you go read it, like, he has no arms or legs, and he's pudgy, fat, or he's pudgy, not fat. And then his creator abandoned him. So he's had a hard upbringing, so he's got a chip on his shoulder, and now he's a shit poster. And if you go to his Twitter, he's got 1,600 followers. And we just launched him three weeks ago, and he's just talking shit. And he's pudgy Pat, so he can say whatever the fuck he wants and can't get in trouble. I was gonna say, well, you brought up a good point. Let you guys don't know where do shit posters come from? It comes from a place of pain. I'm being honest, right? It comes. Everyone who shit posts has like a villain origin story of yeah. someone screwed me. That's it. I'm over it. And I it's mean, like it's funny. Is that a word for troll, kind of? Yeah. Like, yeah, tr like, troll. Yeah. I think there's a difference, Thoreau. I think there's a difference. What's between, What's the difference between a shit poster and a troll? I think a troll is someone who is like intentionally like maybe. I think there's a fine line, right? Like you could be a shit poster and you're not trying to troll. Like I think a tr I think a troll is like maliciously like wants to talk shit about people. It's about intent. Like there you go. That, I, that I based said. I based the pack character off of a shit poster in the sense of like he thinks he's smart. He just wants to talk a lot of shit because he really wants attention because he's like got a chip on his shoulder. He's kind of this like you know, forgotten about guy. Like I kind of tried to base it off real shit posters, right? Yeah, I feel like and like. I think uh, it's crazy the engagement that these these people get, but it works because it's a lot of it's funny, right? And it's about humor. Everyone's down bad, so we need some humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, me but I, I think the question is, do you need to monetize it like this and it, like hyper financialization of all this shit? For shit posting is meant to be like fun and playful, and when you add like a monetary value into doing this does it take away the fun or like, i don't change it i don't think so i think the people who do it almost 
this is like what they've deserved for holding down the space for like the last two years. A bunch anyway. of drama tokens. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know what's really interesting about shit posting or memes just in general is like if there's actually like a high level of intelligence behind it and you have guys like At times. E- Elon Musk, right, is a memer, right? Like you have accounts like Fuck Jerry, that's a billion dollar brand now. They've built the memes, right? So like something really interesting with like internet humor and memes and how that like fits in the future and there are big companies like mega corporations like a pepsi or ab that are like trying to figure out how to meme because they're outside of that culture and they they don't get it but it works so it's super it's a really interesting like movement well i mean it, it does take like like every day you wake up your net worth is lower right to have the courage to get on the internet and crack jokes okay that's brave okay that's like those are my heroes right you wake up you look at your wallet you look there's no offers in like you know in a, in a while it, you know it i think it's it's you're you're being vulnerable right when you're talking shit because that's what a lot of shit posting is too right you're just talking shit on your own space and your own bags on everything and you know so i don't know i, I think it's like it is a noble art that's my, that's my yeah and the, the the best shit posters to your point make fun of themselves yeah you know yeah, I mean? they're self-effacing. Speaking of projects of uh, great shit posters, we got Brain Toads coming out this month, right, Pasta? Brain Toads. You want to talk about Toads for a second? Yeah. yeah. What's good? Bra- brain Toads coming uh, October in like the second or third week. Um, so pay attention, everybody. It's about to get interesting. And my birthday is next week, so I'm going to be dropping more info about that. Yeah. Let's go. Sorry. Yeah. I had to I had to bring it up. I know you're 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 pushing it, bro. We gotta support you. Yeah. At Brain Toads <laughs> NFT with the Z. Nice. Ooh. Nice. I mean he does if you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera right here. He does have some kicks up here, you know, so I don't know. Selling those too. Lovely. Uh let's uh, let's move to another little uh meta that we've been kinda of seeing happening recently, which I'm work I don't know, I'm just calling it the low mid meta, right? Which essentially is projects I'm categorizing as under a thousand. We're seeing a lot of projects pop up. They're doing under a thousand, and they're doing pretty successful, right? They're building big communities. The price is good. Uh, let's see. What did you just low mid meta? Yeah, right there. Yeah, if you scroll down, you can see a bunch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one of the first examples we were talking about is this Pedal Heads by Evan Hilton, who is uh, like an uh, Alien Friends community member, and I think. It will... Josh told the story a little bit better from what I understand. He was just doing commissions for people, making like 3D aliens, and then people kept ordering more and more and more, and then was like, cool, I'll release my own project. Tried to release 40, problem with the minting, accidentally minted an extra 100. So. What is your definition? Yeah, you click that little link right there. What's your definition of low mint? Under five? Under under, under 1,000. Under 1,000. Under 1,000 mint altogether. So if someone mints like 2,500, that's still not a low mint? That's a high mint. That's That's too many. It's a bear. We can't afford 2,500 people. You think it's because of the market we're in? Like if we were back in the bull, would you then consider 25 a low mint? Maybe. The number of participants that are jumping into these things. I mean, you you can't do a 50,000 NFT mint these days. There's not that many people. I I think think just from our perspective, and I kind of got this from probably heroin or somebody, but just, I mean, G-Money probably did 1,000 with the mint one, but like we did 500 because we thought, let's curate a really strong group of 500 people that believe in the vision, that want to be our long-term holders. And ours was free. So that like, but you have this like super strong, loyal community that wants to go build with you. Like I've said, they're not community members, they're partners. And I think that's really helped us. It's an ETH floor and this community is now like ride or die. Let's go build this thing and, and you know, do something awesome together. It's minimum viable community. You need that mid, like thousand true fans, 500 true fans. And then that can lead you into, you know, what you're going to do next. Proof kind of did it with Proof Pass. G Money did it with Emit One. That was a free mint. We've done it. It's been really successful. So, like, I'd say if you're trying to launch something bigger, start with 500, 1,000, maybe even 100. Just win with that group. And if you make them your partners and you deliver a shit ton of value to them, then they're going to ride. Will you mint more? Like, would you expand the supply? Yeah, so we have 500. In two weeks, we launch one that'll be much bigger. Uh, How do existing holders feel about that? Like so they're getting the it for free, and we also just dropped a new meta this week where if you're one of those 500, you can uh, recruit three friends, and then they, you get a second free mint. The reason we did that, again, it goes back to curation. 
we curated this 500 people. We love them. They love us. Hopefully, we're, part, we're, we're partners. If you go get your three friends, you're going to trust them, and you know, you're going to be down to do it, and we want to reward you for that. And this curation thing is so important, like curating the right people who aren't flippers, who are like, yo, I think this can be the next Pixar in five years. Like, we're down, and, and we want to help you build it. And like, our community shows up doing a ton of things to add value. We talked about this with apes, like Pranksy curated that community. It wasn't intentional, but it happened. And that was one of the secrets to board eight. Well, another thing is like the floor price does dictate, right? Your personal feelings about a collection, right? So if you have 10,000 of something, and even if it's doing good, you mint it for 0.05 and now it's 0.1, you're like, oh, it's 0.1 thing. If there's a hundred of them and it's 0.5, everyone's like 0.5, nice. It's like that they did not make as much money, right? Like they don't have as much, they have a war chest. But you just see a higher number, lower mint, and you're like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm buying exclusive shit. I'm in the hot <laughs> club. So yeah. I'm, and like with this, with this Evan Hilton, you know, collection and a lot of just these bear market kind of uh, people that are kind of shining. Um, Evan's been working through the bear, through the bull, through everything, and basically, like uh, Began was saying, he was creating 3D um, alien friends, 3D degen tunes. 3D Cryptoon goons, anything. If you wanted something and you had that character, he would wrap it up in Blender for you. And he got so many commissions that he was making these pedals. And uh, this is one of his sort of creations. He wanted to do um, a little over 40. These are all one of ones, right? And he was putting this out. Uh, they had a little mishap with the contract um, when they were minting. And for some reason, there were so many people that were trying to get one and jamming gas up that um, when they opened the contract, for a few things, they actually had a block with 100 more mints than they expected. Um, well, not 100, but there's like 118 total, right? So it's like 75 more or something. And what it ended up being was uh, Evan's like, all right, great. So when you see these eggs, these are actually ones that uh, are not one of ones yet. So he's only released the first uh, amount that he was supposed to be doing. He's actually still creating the rest of these ones coming through. And what's so amazing is like the community that has always supported Evan um, they want their one of ones. They don't want to sell it. This isn't a flip. You know what I mean? And it's very interesting to, to see projects that hold anything these days, right? And when you're sort of uh, buying into people, I feel like that's like a big thing of us is buying into people. And like um, another project. You, you, you know, go ahead. I was just going to say what, what I think Josh said there is really important, right? And I said this today because it's actually what's going in our, our, our deck and, and model, right? But it's like, NFTs aren't a business. NFTs are not, like, you cannot only sell NFTs to make money and do a business, right? Maybe Doodles did that, I don't know. But I think this is about building IP. It's about building companies. NFTs is simply a tool to build a brand, to build a film, whatever it is. Like, you're building IP, so really you're betting on, like, do you believe in the vision? Do you believe in the team to execute that vision? And are you interested in it, right? Is it something that you personally care about? So then it becomes a lot less about like number go up and flip and whatever. Because if you're trying to flip right now, you're going to lose, probably. Oh, shit, but, Evan's in the chat, everyone. Just stop talking shit, okay? So just like, it's, it's the best project ever. We all love it. No, we were being nice. No, we're kidding. We're kidding, Evan. But yeah, so we, um, and I also wanted to just put like demix on everyone's, you know, uh, sort of horizon of what's going on. Um, this is Mozzie. He's another artist that's basically in the same um, space with, you know, all these projects that are building and building and building. A lot of people only look at kind of the blue chip projects and what they're doing. Um, Mozzie's a Clonex holder. He actually changes his Clonex and he's been working a ton within that community. But um, as far as him creating different uh, art and stuff, he's somebody that like uh, a lot of people really look up to in the space when they're just getting in here. They're just creating projects. He actually made a bunch of molds, like 3D molds, that he was able to um, pass out to all of his holders. So if you owned one of these, he was able to give you uh, a mold and all that stuff. But it's really cool. Him and actually Evan Hilton are going to be doing a collaboration together. So what's cool is, like again, uh, they've created their communities, right? They've built up their, their bases of people, whether it's bear or, or bust, whatever. It doesn't matter. These people are here to support the artist. And um, there was one more on there, which was Jono. And I don't know if we can pull Jono's up, but... Um, Jono is like this, you know, artist from Las Vegas. He basically drops a bunch of projects every week. And um, he's just, Jono's a, a part of the community. I, I actually have notes on Jono here. Um, he's basically, uh, he recently injured his right hand and has self-taught himself how to draw and animate with his left hand. 
Um, while going through physical therapy, he is now teaching himself how to 3D sculpt and is multi-talented with instruments. Uh, if you go in spaces and you ever hear Jono, you're going to literally hear him playing his ukulele for a song and stuff. Um, but that's the cool part is like, I feel like these are my friends. These are like actual true people that you want to do well. And even better, um, you know, this is Naughty Dots as well, another guy. There's, there's all these people coming out, right, that like you'll, you're not going to hear about until it's too late kind of thing. And I think um, just keeping an eye on a lot of these artists and seeing what they're doing um, will give you ideas if you have a project or if you're an artist of what to do. Um, and, and also at the same time, see how you can participate in these communities to, uh, you know, be a part of something that's growing. Yeah, I was saying, like, I mean, look at this right here. Like, this person bought it for 0 0.03. It's a 0.25 floor. Like, that's a, that's a pretty good gain for, you know, someone who's, you know, not a huge mainstream NFT artist. And if you're an artist, too, and you're collection is selling for 0.25 that looks so much different than having a 10k collection for 0.1 like the way people perceive you if you want to release another collection of 10 and maybe they're one eth you've got a much better path if you have a 10k collection for 0.1 and then you're like hi guys here's some one of ones for an eth everyone's gonna be like e -E and that dude I'll, I'll get your shit for 10 bucks yeah so. well the, the the cool thing about naughty and by the way not even shilling projects these are artists up there mike but i feel you um at the same time uh, with Naughty, if you do follow Naughty, he does giveaways. This is how you are able to own a Naughty Dot. Uh, he does a giveaway and he gives you 60 seconds to like, retweet, and comment below. He gets about 100 to 150, sometimes 200, depending on the day. Um, and if you win the raffle, you're able to mint one of his NFTs. So he's giving you this kind of like, if you win the raffle, you're so excited to be a part of the community. And it's much different than just buying to buy and flip. Um, a lot of people were holding these much longer because they had like a, a connection to winning that raffle and, and wanting this piece that he shows the day before. So just some artists to, to showcase. Yeah, well, anytime you interact with an artist, like personally, it's always harder to sell it, right? You meet someone, like, you know, I buy a physical art and you talk to someone, you get it, you put it in your house, you're thinking about selling it, you're just like, oh man, what's he gonna say? He's gonna come over to my house and be like, where's the painting? I thought you, you know, it's like, it. There's something that keeps you more attached that might just be guilt. I don't know. I'm gonna <laughs> hold on to a bunch of works. I was gonna um, say, um, I don't know. I feel like we've been up here like talking for a minute. I just want to hear if there's like any questions or comments from like people in the crowd. Like, just thank you. Well, if I buy one of Patrick's pieces, I mean, it, it has to stay in my house. Like, I mean, I'm not getting rid of it, and it won't be guilt. I'll make sure I'm really into it. Oh, Lovely. If you have any questions, just please raise your hand, chime in. Anyone we'll qu questions, anything, comments? What, here's good. Someone asked, what utilities do these communities bring? And I'll say, this is one of the things I think a lot of these projects, when you release a project of 100 mints, you're not saying there's going to be a game coming and a token and we're going to release merch and this and that. It is, hey, I sell art to you and here's some friends that like similar art, which that's great to me. You know how much better I like? Here's some art for 0.25. Here's some friends that like it too versus, hi guys, here's some art and in uh, 12 months, we're gonna say that the game's delayed again. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah, so. the community becomes utility. Yeah, exactly. Like, wow. I mean, how much utility do you get from, <laughs> you know, I don't know, any, anything you collect that you like, like you buy some Nikes that you like, what's the utility? You can wear them, but also the utility really is being like, oh damn, you got those too, that's super cool, nice, and you talk about shoes for a second with your friend. It's, it's like, it's, it feels like the same thing. I don't know, it's just real interesting, because there's this, still like this gray area of like, I think a lot of people who are maybe in like the PFP game weren't necessarily like art collectors or like heavily into art, like they maybe came into it for different reasons. Like they definitely were, <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's almost like, Close. Like here's Not this the like it's almost like you have to see people be introduced to the idea of here's this piece of art. No, there's no utility. Like here is this piece of art. You know what I'm saying? And I think because we're in a bear market, it's allowing people to actually like accept that hey, this art doesn't have to come with like the skeleton key of passes to events like yo, I just bought this because I like the way it looks. You know what I mean? A lot of us are like former collectors of various things. Like right, how many sneakerheads? You know, that's where I come from. Or you know, baseball card collection, all these things. Baseball cards, Pokemon cards, exactly. But like a lot of collections like that, people buy like baseball cards. We're not all pure speculation the entire time, 
right? In the beginning, people were not literally being like, oh, dude, I'm getting these rookie cards. I'm going to be so rich in the future. I'm keep-. No, it was you're literally. You're a fan. Yeah, you're a fan. You like watching baseball. You want these little pieces of cardboard. You like rearranging them and looking at them. And it's, you're not like, what's the utility cardboard? You're just like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, just like look, at that's, that's my favorite baseball player. It's so these crazy. are last year's stats. Every, what the fuck? every single release, it's just like, yo, what's the utility? What's the utility? And I'm like, yo, like, you're, like what? Like, why is your brain like this? Like, you, this know, you know what's also funny is people say they care about the art. They do they? No. People say they care about the utility, but... They're also never happy about the utility, so like they it's mostly no, care. They care about At least they used up. to mostly just care about number go up, yeah. and that's what I'm saying is like it comes back to like, do you actually care about like what the project's about, like what they're doing, and then do you like the people that are in that community? And if you like, you're interested in it, and the vibes are right, then you should hang on and ride the wave. Well, I mean, like a lot of stuff, like, like sneakers are a great example, right? Where people do not buy sneakers based off aesthetics, right? Like how many Travis Scott, you know, Jordans have sold that the ugliest sneakers ever. He flipped a swoosh backwards at the stupidest thing ever, and they were the hottest shoe purely off hype. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you think there, Nadir? You know, you're going to argue with that? I cannot comment on that situation. Yeah, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's multiple sneakers that are so ugly, and then if Kanye wears them, then who cares? Yes, everyone's got to get them. It's not about the aesthetic there. It is about hype. And some sneaker people are buying them to like resell, but yeah, status, yeah, yeah. So I don't. Interesting. And interesting. Just, just. I'm really here for the art. Well, it, it it will take like a multi-year bear of numbers going down to like get that that feeling out of the system, right? Because a lot of these people number went up very quickly on a lot of things, and that's kind of ingrained into it. So whenever you're buying stuff, like even if you're in it for the art or the tech, like. You're really in it to watch that number go up. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the art, okay? The number going up is a nice, fun bonus of that, okay? You know? we'll, we'll cherry on top. But at the same time, like, what are you talking about? Multi-year bear. It's not going to happen. Haven't you heard? Look it. We're done. All right? Boom is back, baby! Apple's getting the NFTs. Every person on there is going to have a wall, going to have a crypto wallet. It's over. We're, it's, we're done. Facebook, they yeah. just announced the today. The institutions are coming. It's yeah, Robinhood. <laughs> Walmart. Is, this is what I was talking about. This is still, like... Every time someone comes to the space, and I know it's good for the space, right? Someone that already has a name, who's like proven, come, them coming into the space is a good thing. But I just always, you'll keep asking that question of like, what is everyone's like definition of like decentralization? Because I'm telling you right now, they have no interest of being decentralized in this space. No. And, but, and, but it, and, but and someone access. said the other day, that was funny, like all the biggest brands, whatever you want to call them, have raised crazy amounts of money. They're now owned by the VCs. It's just Web2, VC, Silicon Valley. And now it's about the bottom line because they have to pay back investors and those investors need 100x. So it's not about the community anymore for those specific projects. Did you guys hear about how Apple wants 30% of every... That, that's actually what their fee is for yep. anything on the App Store. Standard. So like that, it's, it has a basis, right? But... Um, the Facebook one maybe a little bit makes it a little bit less sense, but what are your guys? Well, I mean, so if you, okay, so they take thirty percent standard, right? Epic sued them over this because they don't want to. This you was know, the nineteen ninety nine ad. This was the whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah, nineteen eighty five. Yeah, so like th this is the standard. I do not want to pay thirty percent to Apple at all, right? But the difference is, if I have an an item, right? Let's say let's say I have a monkey JPEG that I can sell for a hundred ETH, right? Because Apple's onboarded everyone on Earth, and it's worth a hundred ETH, and I give them thirty per, uh, thirty percent, and I got seven ETH. That's cool. Or no one's in the space, and I can only sell that monkey JPEG for an ETH, and I only had to pay a one percent fee, and I made that's. I mean, that's a lot of what we're people are hoping on here is that it's gonna. And is this is this. For if you have a game to be on the app, like an app store, or if you have like a product you can it sell. It says NFT. It just says NFT. For, for any asset sold through any game on the Apple store. So what's, what's interesting percentage. about this then, right, is this is distribution, right? Yeah. So yes, this yes. is, you need a distributor for it to get reach. But this is ultimately like what blockchain was trying to solve that's, for is distribution. So in if, music, if we compromise the centralization, we've completely lost the plot. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's just, it's just exactly. another like, option. In, in music, you, you need a distributor. So you have to go sell 80% of your shit. They end up owning it all. In, in movies, there's four distributors globally. Four. You have to go give them. If your DreamWorks was paying Bob at, at Paramount 10% of net revenue just to distribute DreamWorks films, like the Shrek, right? 
10%. Imagine if you're an independent filmmaker, what you're paying, 95? So like we were ultimately with blockchain trying to remove the middleman, which is distribution, so we could go peer to peer. But, and this but is exactly we did. what we're and going this back is, to. This is what? just one avenue, well, no, no, and you no, no, always no. have another. Wait, 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 yeah. Obviously, that's a good thing, this whole 30% thing. Obviously, I'm not a fan of that. However, this could go in a good way. What if, like, the Google App Store decides, okay, let's get a little competitive. Let's just take 15%. Let's fuck with Apple. Yeah, it could be good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this is going to be incredible. Like, this is really, really, really good for the space, the fact that Apple straight up allows this on apps at all. Uh, Starbucks is going to be one of the largest wallet holders on the planet. And uh, honestly, just seeing blockchain technology and especially user-owned blockchain technology be functional, supported, and openly accepted in the Apple ecosystem, which is by far the most closed ecosystem of tech that is popular. Yes. Uh, this will bring in a whole, or this has the potential to bring in massive waves of users to the point where like, a lot of the uses in this are just going to be free, and the 30% won't matter. 100%. Like, these are the things that have to happen to onboard the masses. Apple, Amazon, Fortnite. Like, these things, as they happen, bring in the masses. However, hopefully in 10 years, once the masses are onboarded, we can move to a peer-to-peer -peer model where I have a movie, I can release it on my website, you come to me, or I have a game, I don't have to go through the app store, You're, it's it's peer-to-peer. -peer. We're, we're not going to get to the masses on getting onboarded unless these yeah. mega companies come in. So yeah, but I don't right think that's now, a good all. thing, though. I don't know, like, that's, I waver on that, whether, like, I understand the idea of mass adoption, but I also think critically about whether crypto is for the mass. Like, it's started as a cypherpunk movement to enable encryption, the passing of secrets outside of the sovereign nation state's control. And if you have an app that obfuscates all of those complexities away, the idea of self-custody, the idea of self-sovereignty and ownership, then what's the point? It just, it's a, but, it's a but, web two veneer on top of like. But no, it's people always, you always like every hobby people get into, you start with like some like very casual version. It gets more and more intense. You start off like when you're a coder, right? I'm dragging and dropping stuff. I'm playing games. You're not really coding. And then that helps you onboard to go, maybe I can be a real deal coder. And now we'll start learning more and more. It's like sure. Apple's going to make it easy for who here wants to get their mom on MetaMask. Yeah, right? but, but let's, let's say once they already have adopted the masses, right? And they convince everybody. Uh, who's gonna stop them from strong arming the whole industry? Like as well, right, as for right now, in real life, in real life, right now, the how- industry. Yeah. The Fed will strong yeah. arm the whole industry. I don't think that, Apple well, is subject to- You know what? Well, I mean, is, I mean, as This in, is all new. That's the as in for the loss. general public. As in for the general public. No, I just want to say, I think it's bullish that they're accepting it because they could have blocked it. I think they blocked the ape the ape game in the beginning, like they were just straight but up blocking. They, they blocked the ape game because if you guys have ever worked with the Apple mobile store, it's, it's very painful no matter what. It doesn't matter. Releasing non-crypto stuff, they block everything. <laughs> it's, it's not, it, yeah. it wasn't crypto specific. I, I think just the fact that they're opening up to the space, that's already bullish. Yeah, I agree. Lance? No, what I was going to say is financial this financial is all new to the NFT, the NFT community, but the ecosystem. But Apple's been doing this. They've been charging 30% forever, and they're still blowing up. So, I mean, it, it really doesn't because matter. It's going to be the same way. It's going to be good. It's going to be good for the they NFT. They charge the 30% because um, they get it on your phone. So that's why. Like. Yeah, the distribution is unbelievable. Yeah, they monopolize distribution, so therefore they can extract oversized rents because they control that distribution. Yeah, but when you're, when you're a developer, you still kind of want that part. That part. No, that's so, and I'm a developer. Right now, I got a like, couple things on. They it, own on the it, system the app now. Store. So, so my thing is kind of what Began was saying, um, and kind of what Wags was saying. It is all about the distribution, right? And if you are someone that is here, you know, if you want to, I hate this word, but if you were here early, right? You're a proponent. You're an innovator of the space. To go back what Began was saying, you got to ask yourself. And I know it's not all about the dollar bill, but if you can have say seven million, seventy million people who are cognitive of what an nft is or have metamask on their phone then you have to ask yourself right like 
if you're going to go sell like your ape jpeg or anything like that you know what i'm saying would you want 70 percent of something that's a million dollars or would you want 100 percent of something that's three thousand dollars you know what i'm saying and that's kind of what they're selling Mm. And then to that, to that is imagine your NFT is worth a million, and Apple wants thirty percent of that. That's what I'm saying. And then the government takes another forty percent. Like once you add it to thirty percent to and those then, numbers, and it looks interest rates significant rise, and then the compared Fed to a thousand. Slowly drains all of us through inflation. Yeah, but if it's still truly an NFT, you can always self custody. It just might not be the most user friendly. You won't have the distribution that the Apple ecosystem provides, but you can transfer it off, and you can do a more peer to peer swap that has a lower fee in the free market ultimately will decide but it takes away that lazy tax that ease of like being able to swap within the ui on an it's app unexpected. it's re- it's really the whole this whole combo is really interesting because you're going to see all the big boys come in the big corporations the governments and they ultimately don't want decentralization they want to own they want to control it and they're going to f- eventually figure it out Hopefully, the most, I think the smartest, most talented people in the world are in Web3 right now, and we figure out the next Web4 or whatever. But it's really interesting to see how this unfolds. And I, I've said this a few times, like it's about the community like kind of coming together as a team, supporting each other, and supporting like things that are decentralized or have the right at least ethos of Web3. Because if the big corporations come in, they seize the memes as... Punk six two five nine likes to say is like it's up to us as a community to ultimately like wage this war against the big you know big corpse. Yeah, I, I was actually gonna say it's like my take is kind of like non consensus, but I think it's extremely bearish. Um, I have like uh, working with some friends that are working on an ETH phone, getting like funding from ETH Foundation and. Like, how are you going to justify funding from that? It's a war on the Saga phone from Solana. Like, I am exceptionally bearish on the uphill battle that they're now going to have to face to justify demand for this because before it was easy. It was every single dApp had no option. They had no distribution. And if Apple takes away that justification for funding to build this thing, like, I am super bearish on. Okay, so to sum up, right, the idea is that because now Apple's entering in, people are like, oh, I'm going to build this, and they go, why would you build that? Apple's already in the space. They're going to do everything. Just fuck off. I'm going to get in somewhere where Apple's not. Okay. I don't don't think think that it'll be Mike. Sorry. I think a lot of people here, like, you got to understand, like, not everyone on the outside world thinks like everyone's here, right? Like everyone's here because they didn't need the consensus to go, hmm, that's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of the entire vibe of the space. So I don't think people seeing Apple build in a space that people will go, yeah, okay, I don't need to build in the space. Cause I think as you were saying, like the best builders are in the space. Apple coming in is not gonna make them go, all right, our job here is done. It's gonna make them go, yo, we need to go harder. Also, fundamentally, the tech we're working with is uh, decentralized, and there Apple can strip chunks of that out. But the uh, as Ben brought up, like there is only so much decentralization you can strip out of the ETH chain as one corporation. It, it's still going to be the ETH chain. It's still going to have validators all over the planet. And so, if they're operating on that tech, Apple just got a whole lot more decentralized. You know, you know what the, the maybe even bigger problem is is in ten years when Apple and Facebook own the hardware, just like they own phones right now. When, they own, when the metaverse is a real thing, they own the hardware, and they're gonna try to force everyone into their metaverse. I would say- idea of a decentralized that, metaverse. That's the fight we're fighting, right? Exactly. Who's well, building the decentralized metaverse, though? I would just say to add a name in there, uh, to add a name, to add a, to add a name, <laughs> to, to add a name in there. Um, Nvidia is going to be one, if not the biggest player in the metaverse space. And Wait, it's who not is even, who? Nvidia, and it's not even oh, really Nvidia. Close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wilder World is, if you know them, super Unreal Engine five, super cool tech. Um, they're 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 in the movement. But they, I met with them yesterday, actually, and they're like, we need to team up with all the other decentralized metaverses and do this as a team versus everyone trying to build it on their own. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hi, I'm Kitty Aki. I'm really excited with the metaverse. Um, Near Protocol, they're building me my own movie theater, and I have a generative project on Near, and I have an infinity pass for 1,111 
people to have unlimited access in this movie theater and we'll be showing my productions which is so awesome and then reaching out to different friends and everything and inviting them to have their own slots that are ticketed through um, the GEMS NFT or if they have a, a like-minded NFT of a community of founder IP area. So it'd be really cool to have that going on continuously. So like when we have our premiere Art Basel, then the people who can't be their IRL, they can experience it in the metaverse, um, that near protocol. But how are you gonna compete against Apple? I'm not they, competing. They have, a, they have a, you know. I'm not competing with <laughs> Apple. <laughs> But I mean, that, this is actually who, who's. Someone said it was. Ba they were bearish on this. That this is the problem. Though. Anything you describe, right? You're saying oh, we're going to take a virtual movie theater, yeah. right? Apple could literally say, "Cool, uh, everyone, whip that together today and release that." And you know, like, it, yeah, is it, that's that. That is like a but, super. But even Apple is subject to the whims of the Fed, and I think that's really the final boss that we're fighting here. Wait, say that again. Say that again. The Fed, the Federal Reserve, is really at the core. That's the final boss of all of this. Even Apple is at the whim of some fucking unelect, unelected official that makes a decision by licking their finger and pointing in the air about what the price of debt will be that impacts the entire global economy. That is the real final boss here. NFTs sit at the very tip of the iceberg. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the, the, the god of Moloch, the god of child sacrifice, the Canaanite god of child sacrifice, of coordination problems, which is really what this technology is meant to solve. It's about coordinating people individually without a central authority. Beating the Fed is that is the point of all of this at the end of the day. Even the apples of the world are subject. Wait, wait, so how do we fight the Fed? You gotta crawl before you can walk, before the you can run, boss. right? And this is like an arrow in the quiver that like could be used in that final battle. So we, we, we actually, like, the, the Basement Gang's a meme project, but it sets up this underdog journey where they have, the, you'll see the episode in a, in a little bit, but the alpha, like, effectively the villain's trying to take over the metaverse and own it and control it and centralize it. So that's what this journey story is about, and it's like the underdogs that are then trying to go on a journey to go to the final, I call him the final boss, and he's the one that's trying to own it and centralize it. Have you uh, followed uh, Futureverse, like the Fluff ecosystem? They've done that, like, um, but open metaverse. And, like, it's it's genius, right? Like, the underlings versus the, the final boss of the, like, centralized Ready Player One metaverse. But they, they're they really, like, yeah, perfect harnessing. Perfect example. Yeah, Futureverse, one. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then you get those big companies that'll... Whatever NFT it be, if it's a game yeah, guild, re rewatch game Ready guild. Player One. It's like the exact same exact situation. Same right? situation like, right I rewatched it on a plane recently. It's like, oh yeah, this is yeah. totally, uh, totally it. Zuckerverse. As, as Heroin says in the chat, the Zuckerverse. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, no. Yeah, we're all gonna be hanging on the Zuckerverse. Well, yeah. they they did announce it today. I don't know if you can pull the link up, Trick. I mean, I don't even understand what Facebook's. Oh, here's it. Meta. Let me see if this works. Wait, what yeah. So doing? introducing digital collectibles to showcase NFTs on Instagram. Let's go. Oh, boy. Meta wants to charge 50%, not just 30%. Wait, for 50% for what? I thought it was just showing them. Yeah, they, yeah, they wanted to do that in the metaverse. Uh, I got it. But, I it's distribution again. I did hear that, like too. I, something well, about what, would, what would Steve Jobs was, think of NFTs? I actually don't know. So, so Steve Jobs, there's actually a that video that um, I recently seen by him, and uh, he talks about the creation. He has a like recent video. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a video that like what I said was there's a video that popped up. rendered in the metaverse. Just come back to life. That popped up recently, like it was a Steve Jobs video, and um, it's it's an old one, obviously. Uh, but like you know, he he talks about the creation of Web three pretty much, um, and like. He, he, it's, he goes past like web two and he's like well the, the web three like and he talks about that so I feel like it was already like part of the plan um, for Apple to like do this and like everything to be moving forward in web and you know you can't predict cancer so you ever think about how much money we would have made if we when we watched Silicon Valley if we just accepted it as truth you mean, wait, wait, the, like the show? Yeah. The TV yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, listen, like, I'm a programmer. I watched that show, and I was just like, oh, my I've God. Never wait, 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 so that's not a true story? story? Pied, Pied, Pied Piper coin. You know, in a way, it kind of said, like, well, what, when did the show come out? I don't even know. Yeah. 2017. Because yeah. they, they were on top of the whole new internet meme. They, they, they were, like, talking about basically, like, Ethereum. Decentralized web. In a yeah. story. Yeah. And, and it was like, like, they were fucking on it. Yeah, yeah. Question. 
I look question, back, I'm like, but like also I think like everything <laughs> we were talking about today kind of ties in together. So I had a question that it leads up to. So we talked about like the smaller mints, and I think that's a I don't know if you guys know somebody named Balaji Sarnavasan. Mm -hmm. So he talks about network states. So I feel like this is kind of like uh, that, right? Mm, you know, mm, we're starting mm. off with these small communities online, yep. and then 100%. we start meeting in real life, and then we could, you know, create our own rules amongst our own like communities yeah and then be recognized i pulled it up like the one sentence thing but about like the regulations because it leads to this is what he says in one statement a network state is a highly aligned online community with a capacity for collective action that crowdfunds territory around the world and eventually gains diplomatic recognition from pre-existing states yeah. so he basically thinks we will have that kind of regulation because will have these communities that will be recognized. If, so if I network would, states can outcompete nation states. Eventually, if, though, they yes. will. I mean, and I feel like we're already creating like, social, like these community tokens. So I guess my question was, like, how do you guys feel about community tokens and where we're going with that? All right, so I'll ask you. And like, you, the viability all right, of like, so how that I'll, I'll be able to answer that based on this, the answer to this question. Would you consider the Yuga Labs ecosystem a network state, or now is it a nation state? It's starting to be a, it's a community, but it has potential to turn into a network stake. Yeah, but it's yeah. owned by A16 now. That, so that's my point. It's not. But it's still a community. I mean, yeah. if you own one of the Yuga Labs NFTs, do you feel part of that community? It may be governed by an entity right now, but it's still well, like we, we, community. I, I gotta vote. Huh? Okay, there's a, there's a DAO. All right, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Okay. take my tokens and vote on things, and whichever there, way I vote there, never there, passes. There's a yeah. decentralization theatrics I, I, in okay. every DAO. And I, I feel like it's a part of it, but like, <laughs> maybe let's just, real. Let's just go the, the opposite, like they're forking the road. They don't go raise all the money. They remain independent, and now it really is like the founders and the community partnering to build something. Maybe you don't grow as fast or become like this dominant player, but it certainly would shift what will happen in the next five years with that. Who well, knows which yeah. way that goes, but I promise you it becomes a lot more about the bottom line and profits than it does about the community or the vibes. Or yeah. Can you reiterate you your ECs. question about the coin? Definitely. Pardon me? Can you reiterate your question about the coin? I was just curious what everyone's opinion is on like tokens in general, I guess, as far as community tokens and being like that currency that we could use amongst our own communities. Well, all, all currency is community, totally. really. It's totally. a collective belief and an illusory value that we all believe to be true. Okay. So on some fundamental level, whether it's a token or a currency or gold or silver, whatever you want, there's, it's what humans believe it to be. And well, then that, that brings the truth to, have, to it. To have like a token work around a certain brand, IP, whatever, it has to be like almost like a rewards-based token, right? So like you believe in this ecosystem, there's a variety of things to do, events, content, products, whatever, that sits on top of like this blockchain layer. And as you participate or engage within the, let's just say, board Ape ecosystem, you're earning tokens. And then those tokens could be swapped out, but it makes it more beneficial if you redeem it within the ecosystem which means it's like a circular economy. Well, so, so, so it's everything you need within your lifestyle that you're earning just by participating and engaging. It's a circle. But there's one problem, right? Because when you do any type of reward system, like I get Starbucks points, right? I can't uniswap the Starbucks points out, which means I also can't see how much those Starbucks points are worth, which means also when I get my coffee in the morning, I don't look at it and go, what the hell, I get less today? And then I'm fudding this particular project, right? So I'm on a ton of projects, I'm getting coins all the time, right when you introduce a coin, all of a sudden the community goes to stop talking about this one asset, the JPEGs, what the price is, and everyone's watching charts and doing TA and going, oh no, it's a bad day today. It's a good day, it's a bad day. So I, so any community that has a coin, right? It's like, if you're not ready for it, it's the death sentence. When apes brought an ape coin, the discord became hell. I left for like literally a month. We all left because it was all these new people like, I bought it, why is it going up? What the fuck's going on? Where's the coin? Why isn't it more? And we're like, dude, this is not what the community's about. And like, it took a long time to like, finally like stabilize and settle. And now it's like, I don't even know, I don't ever look at the price, but I don't know, it's like four bucks, it's been four bucks forever. It pumps a little bit, it goes back down, no big deal. Once it finally sits somewhere and finds like a, a bottom area where it's gonna chill, we can relax and have fun. Same with like Wolf Game. So I think the 
coins are so devastating for a community I, I, unless I you're ready. Well, so this is like the hyper financialization of communities, which is a massive neg negative of tokens. But I think tokens do make sense and would highly recommend all of you guys to like look into Balaji's stuff. You can go to 1729.com. The whole book's on there for free. He's also done the podcast circuit. So like if you don't feel like reading a book or listening to an audio book, there's a bunch that go into detail, but like, yeah, tokens are an integral part of like that network stake idea, that shared collective ownership that then moves from the virtual realm into the physical and you can end up buying a property and be recognized from by the nation states. But that's kind totally. of, yeah, I, tokens I make sense. Yeah. I just like, my question is like where we are now, it's like so far from like- Oh, we're so early like, on all yeah, this stuff. Totally. It, yeah. it, it, and it does suck to say like we're early and that doesn't mean everything goes up and to the right, right? It means like we're in this weird experimental phase where people are like yield farming at a thousand percent and stuffing it inside, no, like burning sense. an NFT to mint four other NFTs that mesh together to If, if anyone's not yield farming at a hundred percent, go tell yeah. some old financial person and watch them go what are you talking oh, about yeah, yeah. what scam yeah, exactly. are you in and go nah it's yeah. real look at this site right here hey, it's working. I'll tell you what, this. it looks real looks rare held me down during the holidays all well, not even that. Yeah, so yeah, let's let's be real if anybody is a 10k tf holder and you don't you haven't checked it today like you got an airdrop you got apecoin waiting for you you literally got money for you so you know i got the text and it's like i my first ape coin when i claimed it the first time they dropped it, it was like 950 dollars you know, swapped it out, whatever. But, you know, I don't know how much you have because you are grailed up right now. So I don't know what the stipulation, because you never know, right? How, what you have to what it is. Do I have OG bags? Do I have my gear? It, are the grail doubles? But it is interesting to where, like you're talking about tokenization community. Um, we participate in, you know, different parts of the game and, and we were earning badges and then that, that stipulated to it. Now we're just getting airdropped money but they're also airdropping you ApeCoin, a coin that has already got some established base, a lot of backing. I'm not sweating about the ApeCoin price. If they were dropping a new token, you know what I'm doing day one. I'm dumping that the moment I get it, like literally. And then if I want to keep supporting them, I'll buy it like a day later for half the price, right? Well, so, and they adopt it too as, as now, oh, you have to pay an ApeCoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know totally. what I mean? So it's like we're giving you this. But if you want to sell it, that's on you. You're probably going to have to buy more in order for the things later. We're giving you this for free things that you can keep continuing to buy to stay in the ecosystem. But if you don't think of it that way, you can take the profit and call it a day. Totally, totally. I have a... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Apple getting into the NFT game is super powerful, but this is just a, a, your opinion here, right? They're only accepting USD for all of their NFTs. Cryptocurrency purchases are strictly not legitimate so on one hand that sucks but like on the other hand yes they're opening up to people who have no idea what cryptocurrency is which is powerful in itself right but does that sort of phase out the whole cryptocurrency aspect of it altogether do you see this as a positive that they're only doing this for usd again because they're responsible you know they have to answer to the fed but like we're literally sort of taking out one of the biggest points yeah. Of NFTs. I but are, are they buying a NFT with USD? So if I want to buy an NFT <sighs> on, uh, Apple. Via, on Apple, I yeah. can only do it in USD. I can't right, use right. cryptocurrency but, at what, all. What are you purchasing? You're purchasing an NFT, correct? Yes. That NFT you can transfer to a non-custodial wallet and you can swap it for whatever to token you want, right? But yeah. interesting though, if, like if Apple allows that. For, for what Bankroll is saying up here, who, you know, he's a, a big friend holder. So he's got all these friend coins. He's saying, what about a coin like friend coin? Price doesn't really go up or down. Market is set price. They buy stuff with alien friends, money, and they sell for friend coin. This is gained by holders. So basically for staking, you are in friend coin, right? And alien friends are stocking their, their marketplace up with things for you to buy with friend coin. When it first launched, they had like a cool cat in there. They had a trip to LA if you wanted to come to Friends Fest. Um, they have merch. I saw uh, our friend King Combat, I believe. He um, cashed in friend coin. He got a $200 voucher for merch. And yeah, yeah, he got a UFO hotel. Yeah, yeah. So you, you saw the stuff. It's like you, there's all these things in this, this marketplace. But at the same time, when I think about it, it's, it's a Web3 way for Dave and Busters to be real. And I don't mean in a rude way, but the money you can't swap out, right? But you keep that Dave and Buster's card if you didn't use it all. And when you go back, you're, you recharge it. So I feel like it does have value. 
So I have a question speaking on, because we were sitting a lot on like tokens and, and Fed, and I'm, I'm, I'm liking this, right? So would you consider the US dollar just the to, like the token to participate? Yeah, it's a shit coin, I agree. No, I'm saying so. Like, oh, that's what you're saying? No, oh. I'm saying like, you know, like, so like, would, <laughs> would you guys consider not like the US dollar is just like the token to participate in like United States society? Yeah. Well, yeah, because if you don't pay your taxes in USD, you go to jail. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it just, it's, it's this piece of paper that someone gave, like, value to, and it allows you to participate in the United States ecosystem, right? So that it would kind of be kind of the same. But like, right now, like, the U.S. dollar is one, of, is one of the most trusted currencies all over the world, right? Everywhere, right? It's been, but it takes a long time. Built, well, not, not actually, oh, God, let's not get into Bretton Woods. But there's reasons why. It's trusted all over, right? But it's, it's a collective agreement. Yeah, because we have a standing army with nukes. Because we yeah. have a monopoly on violence. <laughs> exactly, right? But it, it is, to, to like FUD the US dollar, we've got to write a bunch of, we got to do a bunch of stuff. We have to move armies. We got to get defeated in some things. We have to like, it has to go crazy. We might have to go to war. Might have to go to war, but yeah. Em uh, empires don't collapse. Look at this right here. Time. If you, no, trick, if you scroll up the tiniest <laughs> bit, this is what POW did after a Twitter space today, right? Like that's the, if you have a coin for a community that is not solid, this is Pixel Vault. This is a Twitter space. This is what happens. Looks right? like a bond market. Do you know how many Twitter spaces we have to do to get the U.S. dollar? We have to. Yeah. Everyone needs to be twenty four seven. Like we need, you know, we, we need Biden on Twitter spaces saying it looks bad, guys. What 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 is, is that? The does, British. Does power? anybody know what Pixel Vault is doing? <laughs> yeah. Is that the USD to try comics? To Tom Sterling. Yeah. yeah. Beanie was behind them. I don't know. And does anyone well, know what Pixel Vault's doing? Hundred million dollar raise. Like, Okay. Yeah, yeah, don't get me started. I'll just oh, shit did, on them. Did you post? Was was that you? That was that Pixel Vault, the villain thing. This that was from what, them. That's what this I was, is what a hundred million gets you. That's that's what I was. I was I was trashing them. I'm sorry. Like, but no, yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, this was from. Yeah. They did a space and then they announced like the game is gonna take even longer and then we were like, what? Why do I own this stupid fucking coin? And then it dumps. Now imagine you're a person in that community. All day on Twitter, you got to deal with everyone being like, "Hey, you're, you're shit dumped." That it's like, "No, it's fine. It's good." It's well, this is this is what public company execs have to deal with, right? You're a, so you're a startup, you're working, you're grinding, you have no idea what your freaking market cap is, and then you go public, and every day when the U.S. stock market is open, you have this real time fluctuation, and to to put that pain onto an early stage startup that's pre-product market fit that's going through the entire like startup process that's fucking terrible well this is why elon you know we want to take things private like i mean working in a public company sucks every quarter i have to tell people like how are you doing oh god like you know yeah like, try, no, doing, I, try doing that when it's early stage and it's 24 7 365 you don't even get holidays exactly <laughs> yeah exactly got some um, number one rule when you was startup as soon as you raise money you're an employee like yep. the moment you, if you're a founder, the moment you raise bread, you're an employee. I'll, I'll just say with, with Lyrical, we've never raised a dollar and that's allowed us to just do what we want. Focus on the community, focus on the brand. We never had to sell out. And that's that genuine, like pureness is something special. Not everybody can do that, but if you can, or you can do it with your community, then I think really interesting things happen, especially in the long term. Totally. I had a quick question regarding Meta and Facebook. You know, um, I just wanted to know what you guys thought about having, um, you know, Facebook. They're one of the biggest data collectors out there. You know, having access to all our OpenSea transactions, transactions, you know, on the net, and seeing, you know, ways that they could market more towards us and the Web three. It's all public anyway. It, it, it is public. I was just, you know, like, how do but we no, feel now about they're gonna, them they're gonna on, say on a larger scale? Yeah, they're going to say, hey, I noticed you were over here and there's a, you know, they're going to sell you NFTs targeted to where you're walking around. You know what I mean? Hey, like, I noticed that's... you were looking at pudgy penguins. Here are these four other, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that, that's right. why yeah, ZK technology derives. is so important. Zero knowledge proofs, uh, which is fancy cryptography that enables secrets to be shared publicly where you can share information. You can prove that you were the center of that information without the underlying secret being shared publicly. And so privacy and this, this, brings up issues with like tornado cash and all the sanctions and all that kind of stuff but no no i wanted to ask you though privacy is really important and it's not currently the case so yeah they could very well uh, exploit whatever da transactional data that you're facilitating on chain to advertise to you a, a public blockchain is a public transparent permanent it's all there so it's just a matter of parsing the data and making sense of it so like 
you know, if they're not doing it, somebody else will. And I do understand the, 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 the connection of like Web3 public blockchains and all of that other stuff that they're collecting on you and like correlating those two together just means, uh, you know, you're going to buy a pudgy penguin and then whatever is referred to you after that. It'll be a good, good referral. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Yeah, it just it's just it's just uh, real interesting. I just keep every week, every month, I feel like the threshold is pushed further and further away from the concept of decentralization, and it's always pushed further and further away. And it's like you guys are familiar with the Trojan horse, you know what I'm saying? Like it's being Trojan horse with like adoption. Like, hey, yeah, we're moving away from decentralization, but like. It's good for adoption, like and 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 we've been saying that like every like once like once a month used to say it and now we say it like every week and I'm just noticing this trend of like we're getting a little further further away from decentralization and the means of distribution or like adoption and I'm just interested to know like when will be when will be like too far things always swing back and forth though right I mean I just hate to do like a stupid like I keep bringing up tech right but like it's literally render everything on the server we got a better way render on Cloud. the client yeah. ooh back to the server ooh back on the client once you've been in tech long enough people you meet young kids that are like well, there's a new hot thing and I'm like totally great wait four more years and it goes back and then four more years and it goes back because you innovate doing you innovate decentralized so it gets more centralized boom we need to decentralize and, and, then decentralize and it speeds up and it gets more user friendly and then people realize you need more decentralization and it, it swings back yeah, yeah I think it's all about swinging. incentives yeah it's, it's what, whatever is incentivizing you and right now if there's a real reason to use decentralization if you're like if your currency is getting hyperinflated away and you don't hold us dollars then you might want to go to something like Bitcoin or Ethereum because then you're going to be able to store your wealth in something that's not that can't be inflated away. There's a reason to use it. It's all about the incentive. Some people they want an easy user experience and they're willing to compromise the centralization for ease of use. And that's yeah. on that kind of spectrum. I per think individual. a good example is Robinhood. Like Actually, one of the best yeah. examples that we have. You know, they they try to get adoption, but I think it's a balance of knowledge and adoption. You know, like uh, Robinhood. You know, like they don't care who's investing or using the product. As long but, as they have people using it. Well, right? well, well, is, well yeah. we still have you though, really quick. I wanted to see what we're have, what have you been looking at this? Because you were talking about the UFOs. I'm a holder. I'm a holder. So. I know. So what have you been looking at the marketplace? Because we're talking about coins, and I, your opinion as well. What do you think well, about? It, it keeps fluctuating and, and keep adding new things. So I'm just waiting to see. What yeah, what's interesting too though is how they're actually buying things from community members and different people and putting them on. So they're yeah. sweeping floors by putting them on here for other holders and stuff. Yeah, you know, and even like the yeah, other project, other NFT projects, as other well. NFT projects on here, like um, even like the, the the plushies. We always talk about these things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, twenty five on there. So it's it is interesting how the value is not created in the dollar amount of the coin. The value is created in the community and and what you're the value is created in how many stuffed animals you can buy. Something <laughs> stable, yeah. right? A stable. Yeah. Like okay, it always brings back the Costco hot dogs. Is that Ch Chuck E. Cheese? Coin. Would you say that's also what? <laughs> holds the value of the U.S. dollar, same thing? Yes, how many stuffed animals they can buy. 100%. Uh, yeah, I can buy honestly. stuffed animals with U.S. dollars. No one's going to deny me. All right, so USD is just a... Well, it's a way of taking stuffed animals and a divide. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's a way to buy a lot of lamps, more stuffed animals. Yeah, yeah, lava lamps and stuffed animals. Right, well, so you actually, well, you're to <laughs> circle back, uh, Robin Hood this made their announcement too. This doesn't decorate up here, by the way. So, uh, true... So yeah, you didn't see this? You just mentioned, yeah, so Robin Hood, they're coming out with their own wallet. Uh, the only problem is Polygon based. Okay, you know, I don't know about that. Uh, but you know, I mean, R Robin Hood did onboard so many people into stock trading and then burned them all. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I know so many friends who literally they were, it was like Robin Hood's the first and then it was one year later, they're just dirty DGENs. You know, not in NFTs, over in stocks. So they could pull a bunch more people on, and then what's going to happen? They'll get burned again, and then they'll end up, you know. They'll end up learning. They'll they'll end up learning. I don't exactly. See, that's learning. my thing. I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't think a lot of people who are investing on Robinhood were buying like ETH and Dogecoin, going, "Damn, I don't actually own this coin." I think they're more just like, "Oh, look at this ticker go up. Look at the ticker so, go so up." So, so question: Where where did you buy your first crypto? On um, Coinbase, uh, or MetaMask, or Coinbase, 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 a yeah. centralized, easy yes. to use, link up to your bank account. Yes. You can trust it. it. Wasn't a yeah, it all wasn't the a things, right? Yeah. You can't just. 
push you right into the deep end and be like, yo, bro, write down these free 12 words, hide them, bury them in the back. You need to put it in a Ziploc bag. It so needs to be fireproof. So, like first first you're run away. I, so I would say my experience is like, I got them at the same, I got them at the but same time. But you're a time, developer. Right? <laughs> I got them at the same time, but I brought my first, first on Coinbase, but I got MetaMask and Coinbase no, at the same time. But, but I, I think the point is that like for the, for the majority, and how, how many people in here bought their first crypto or, or uh, on some sort of centralized uh, provider? I, I, I bought on the, um, the free Bitcoin thing. <laughs> They lost that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, the point is that like this more easy to use is like a good onboarding. And now do you keep all of your crypto on Coinbase? Probably not. Yeah, yeah well, because you, you can't, you have to go through a regulated exchange to trade fiat for any coin. So it's kind of a forcing function, right? Like unless someone yeah. gifts you some ETH and then you can trade up on Uniswap or something like that without ever having to touch. We're not using localcryptos.com. I thought we were all well, using Yeah, yeah, local crypto. Bitcoins. Well, the, the crypto <laughs> weekend pump was a thing. If any of you guys remember during COVID, if you were in stocks, sat Friday, you're like, oh shit, everyone's got to gamble on the weekend. Yep, move it into crypto for the weekend. It would pump and then just sell on Sunday early. And it was just like, boop, okay, I did it. Oh, I did it again. It's going to work next week? Why? Yep. But it was Start such a... Start buying on Wednesday. Sun keeps yeah. rising. <laughs> yeah, front yeah, run yeah, that yeah. Santa Claus rattle. Yeah. yeah so I, I was going to say, I mean, I, I buy my ETH in cash at the beach. You know, if you guys go, it is Venice Beach, guys. Venice, if, you, if, right. you all, if you're in Venice, okay, there are people who will sell you some ETH for cash at the beach, okay? Like, so I'm just... I'm just no, <laughs> no on, on that note, I mean, if you want to take... Like, we talked about uh, decentralization. We talked a lot about privacy. What's the most private way to buy crypto it's a bag of cash behind a starbucks where you have a face mask on going into an account we talked about it being well, well, public face transparent mask? or whatever i don't no, know no no I you mean, send I'm, in a you pay a decoy yeah, have you I'm, not I'm done this before like a, a, a <laughs> come on man, man. You, you, hey, <laughs> i'm trying to think of the most okay. private way okay just, come on man peer to peer no middleman you talking about decoy you do it through a proxy person <laughs> tie the money onto a dog send it over there with a little whatever but like uh but but a blockchain is public transparent permanent it's it's a dystopian privacy disaster but <laughs> it's still pseudonymous right so if the money goes into this account it hasn't touched anything associated with you your person it's not really linked to you that much beautiful and with that i think it's time to end thank you everyone for coming we're gonna be back here next week same time same place uh if you're not in the discord well on on the twitch if you do bang discord it'll pop up also, if you do bang uh, gang, you'll pop up some information about Basement Gang Mint coming soon. Trick, if you could pull up that uh, QR link, too, for anyone who wants to scan here. This for anybody that came, and we got a show tomorrow at 9 a.m. It'll be fun. It's, we're, we're live acting on, on Twitter Twitter space. spaces? Boom. Twitter spaces, 9 a.m.? It's, it's, I host it with Chad Moonberg and Danny Degen, and we take celebrity callers. We had Rick and Morty, South Park... Christopher Walken last week, so it's fun. Tune in. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone. We're going to hang out here now. I, d I just ordered pizza, by the way. Oh, nice job. Beautiful. No. Good night, Jason. Pasta with the pizza.